Welcome to Rickshaw Scale Modelling. This is part 8 of Wing Knots Salt with F1 Camel. Scale is 132. In part 7, I concentrated on the undercarriage and wheels. So in this part, I'm going to be uh, concentrating on the rigging for the model. So let's jump into this and see how well I get on. Starting off with a little prep work for the prop. And I'm using XF7 flat red for the cone of the uh, prop. With the variant I'm doing, it needs a little bit of prep work, so I'm just taking away the rivet work here, right, which um, indicates that you should do in the instructions. And I'm painting it in Revel Up Color 382 Wood Brown. Onto the engine now, and the first color I'm using is Tamiya's XF56 Metallic Grey. There's various um, metals uh, colours to be painted on here and the next is Tamiya's XF16 flat aluminium and it's only the inner part of this the, all the rest is just framework uh, for the part the, these are little um, rods that go up the engine and for the middle section it's Rebel Aquacolor 90 silver now the reason why I'm not using the Tamiya silver it's more like a silver leaf uh, colour this is a more flatter silver I can now begin the assembly, so as the cylinders uh, are getting assembled first, they're just two halves placed together. And then the connectors go on at the top. Next to go on are the push rods. So it's from the central position and they just lay on top and each one connects to a little uh, location point on the end of the connectors at the top of the cylinders. And then the drive shaft goes inside the injection pipe uh, unit before it all gets placed on to the other side of the cylinders. Now to complete the engine, uh, the instructions say uh, use some rigging uh, for for the legs. Now the picture they're showing you there, they're in silver. Generally I would do this just with copper wiring because I think it stands out a lot better. Um, however, it says use a bit of rigging. Now, after looking at the sprue, I realised that the push rods, there's a spare set of them. So I'm just using the push rods uh, for the leads. So I, I painted them in the silver colour and uh, placing them in. Now, I've had to trim each one down to fit, but they, they go in between where the drive shaft is up to the other connection point at the end of the cylinder camera doesn't really pick that pick it up too well um, and it's a little bit fiddly work because it's so small but it is worth doing i'm going back to the prop and i'm just placing on some of the prop decals this is why i started prepping and preparing the prop now the the propeller won't actually go on until the end of the build but it's uh, good to get everything on and dried before it's time to place it on so now I'm just checking the engine for fit. The instructions say to place this in now, but after checking it for fit, um, I realised it was better placing it inside the cowling first before fitting the the whole unit. So that, that's what I've decided to do. Um, the it's a really tight fit. You don't really need any cement for this. It pushes in and it will hold there. And then it's a simple case of lining it up. There is location points so that you know you're not going to get it the wrong way uh, into the wrong position, I should say. And it just uh, presses into the the engine um, back plate. And uh, that's it, really. So now I'm moving on to the rigging. Um, and the rigging is, um, can be a complicated business uh, trying to get it right. Now, generally, I, I like to uh, use turnbuckles on my rigging but um, after reading about the Saltworth seemingly I didn't have any turnbuckles so um, I'm having to do it the old fashioned way um, so what I'm doing here is I'm creating an anchor point unfortunately my hand will get in the way quite a lot here but I'm just making a, a knot at the bottom of the strut and then I'll be tying that top and it, the, then we'll dry within the super glue to create my anchor point 
And now they're not it's only a single knot. I don't want a big clump of uh, line at the end of the um, strut. So it's essential that I have enough uh, super glue on here to keep it stable. So as you can see, that runs through onto the strut of the um, undercarriage here. So I'm just pulling it over again. I'm just wrapping it around, pulling it over, and I'll use uh, my, my locking tweezers just to keep it in position before applying a little bit of super glue. I'm then carrying on that line down into the opposite strut. So it's um, going to the opposite strut of the underca undercarriage, then going down onto the wing strut, and that's uh, tied off in the same way as I began. I'm now working on the other side, and that's uh, done it was that same way, um, but uh, this time it's getting connected to the struts on top of the um, wing, or where the pilot sits. And as before, uh, it's just a little bit of super glue just to secure it, placing the glue on, then uh, pulling it taut. Now, you only have a very small window here. Uh, for before this sets, so you have to be quick. Now, as I'm rigging this up, you, you can see that um, I've got the line going in between the two struts of the undercarriage here. Now, technically, um, there shouldn't be any rigging there, um, but um, it's just easier to have it as a running rigging as you go along. This is why I haven't painted it yet. Because it's uh, transparent, um, you won't really notice it that much. And plus the fact it's on the underside anyway. So as you're displaying the aircraft, you, you won't really see it. But if you're doing something like this for the first time, um, and you're not sure, just play around with it and um, see how uh, what works for you really. Like everything in this uh, build process, just do whatever works for you. Use these videos as a guide, of course. Um, but um, whatever you feel comfortable with, do so. Of course, these uh, lines can be cut from between the struts anyway, because each point is um, anchored with a little bit of glue. And the rigging for the control flaps, um, th this is uh, getting placed down into the hole that I drilled before painting, and that will go into the anchor point at the bottom part of the flap. And once everything's uh, settled and trimmed up, it's time to place on the decals. So these decals are going on the normal way, uh, just a, a bit of water slide uh, to place them on. There isn't actually much decals to go on, uh, even less so because I've only got half the fuselage. But they've been on quite well. And once the decals are dry, I'm using Tamiya's X10 gun metal to paint the rigging. Now you don't necessarily have to paint the rigging, but I prefer to have a darker colour on the rigging. So because this is transparent, I only need to put, uh, just run my brush along the line, being careful not to put too much pressure on it, of course. And the last part of the build is to put the prop on, and that just pushes on, no need for the cement. Um, it's a nice tight, tight fit, you can see me there twisting it on. And then there's a coat of clear polish uh, before the weathering. I'm using Tamiya's Weathering Master Series and I'm using B and the suit component here just to mark up the wings a little bit. Not going too heavy, just streaking it on so that um, I've got some um, wear and tear marks throughout the build. And to finish it off, I'm using Windsor and Newton Matte Varnish uh, to uh, seal everything in. Now I'm not using the varnish up uh, up to the engine cow and leaving that with the um, semi-gloss um, polish on it um, because um, that part's uh, metal so it's nicely machine on it. So this is where I'll bring part 8 to uh, a close. Next part, part 9, will be the actual final reveal. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out the channel for my uh, other videos? There may be something there that you like. If you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell and you'll be kept up to date with all my future bills. Hit that like button, leave a comment, and of course don't forget to share the video. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.